Hello, welcome back. In our last video, we looked at some challenges that were encountered by churches that were engaging Muslim communities. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at some lessons learned from these churches as they were reaching out to these Muslims and building their friendships and their relationships with them. And you can see on this chart, on the right-hand side, this, there are seven lessons. These churches were intentional, they had multiple approaches, they practiced and received hospitality, they had compassionate friendship, that the Bible is central, experience motivated team, faith is foundational. So first, intentional. Intentionality occurred across all the categories of training, outreach, and relationships. Six out of the seven churches in this study initiated the relationships they had with Muslims. So there are something like 2,700 mosques in the United States. That sounds like a big number, but there are about 380,000 evangelical churches in the United States. So we need to be the initiators when it comes to these relationships. One leader explained why the relationship with the mosque that they had, and this is a church that had a relationship with mosques for over a decade, explained why that endured. It required a lot of intentionality. It's not just that something that you do casually, you have to do it very intentionally. It won't happen by accident and the moment momentum could be lost very quickly. So we've just been extremely intentional and very helped by the Lord. So implementation, which I've already talked about, is we need to be intentional about getting into these relationships and be the initiator. So, next, multiple approaches. Churches initiated with Muslims in many different ways. And a few of those were a variety of outreaches, types of teams, different ways that prayer was practiced, and various ways of communicating with the congregation. So, one way a local church can discern what is best for them, and, and because it, as we said, there are a variety of approaches, is by looking at some of the examples we've discussed in this series. So take a look at the first video uh, with, the, with the different types of models, the organic model, support group model, represent the church model, and use those as kind of a guideline to create your own approach to how you're going to engage a Muslim community. Next, and we saw this very often as well, they practiced and received hospitality. So, and this was seen across every, all seven churches that I looked at, did this. They practiced and received hospitality. And many of the events that the churches hosted took place around holidays, especially Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter. The most popular ways they received hospitality were either an invitation to a Muslim home or attending an iftar dinner. Traditional holidays provide wonderful and rich opportunities to be able to share our faith with Muslims. One leader gave a description of a Christmas party they hosted for some Muslim families. She said this, We had our normal meal and everything, and we invited two or three families. And all of us made an ornament or brought an ornament, and we said, This is what it means to us. It was special. Like I did a star, you know. We talked about the star is what led the people to Bethlehem. One person did a candy cane. It was really cool, and then we gave them their ornaments. Because ornaments, those symbols, can really communicate the message of Christmas. Another leader said this about devotionals he shares at an Advent dinner that they do every year with a local mosque. He said that that devotional is an open door to share the gospel. He continued, every year I'm sharing openly the gospel in various ways. One time it was from focusing more on Mary because there is so much on Mary. One time it was focusing on John the Baptist because there's so much about John the Baptist. Another time it was more of an Advent yearning for the kingdom of God to come because of all those Advent themes of peace and joy and justice and love fulfilled in Jesus the Messiah. These churches also displayed a willingness to honor Muslim guests by adhering to their dietary restrictions and some of their, their cultural norms as well, such as separation of, of genders, having halal meat, which is the Muslim form of kosher. kosher. And it is also worth noting that many of these hospitality events took places at houses of worship, showing 
that church, church facilities and mosques are places that Christians and Muslims are willing to go. Muslims will come to your church if they are invited. So some ways that we can implement uh, the, these uh, things that the, these churches did. One, holidays are a great avenue for both extending hospitality to Muslims and receiving it from them. We saw iftar dinners uh, as a way to um, receive hospitality from Muslims. A lot of mosques will have open iftar dinners or breaking of the fast meals during the month of Ramadan for people in the community. So that's a way that we can begin to engage them by going to those, those dinners. Second, traditional holidays, again, provide wonderful and multiple ways for us to be able to, able to share our faith with Muslims. Three, willingness to enter a Muslim house of worship and receive hospitality shows that Christians respect them and we're en willing to enter a place that maybe we feel a little bit uncomfortable being in, but it shows that we respect our Muslim friends and we're willing to go to them. Next, compassionate friendships. Christians took to heart issues that concerned their Muslim neighbors to the point that some of them even used familial language when talking about them. So after building a relationship with the Muslim community over a long period of time, one volunteer, she, she described her, her Muslim friends this way, that they are family now for me, she continued. I care about their families. I go to funerals. I love them enough now, and now I'm going to tell them about Christ, and now I'm going to go deeper because now I love them. Also, Muslim and Christians did joint work projects together, things like Feed My Starving Children or uh, a food bank or something like this, and th they displayed peaceful and harmonious relationships with one another. So I've, I've mentioned that Advent dinner a couple of times, but at an Advent dinner, an, an imam got up, and his country had gone through a, a horrible civil war. And there were many people who came to the United States as refugees as a result of that civil war. And he said, referring to the relationship that his mosque had with the church, he said, in my country, if a group like this had existed, the war would not have happened. That is worthy of us to just take a second and pause and think about what, what can be avoided when these kinds of groups exist in our communities and how it can lead to our communities flourishing and experience peaceful relationships not just between Muslims and Christians, but between others as well. And we can be setting an example. So, implementation. Christians can work together with, with Muslims on issues of public concern. This gives us the opportunity to live out the teaching, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Next, the Bible is central. Now, the use of biblical re references was a present across all of the churches as well, and using it in different ways. So this shows a value, the evangelical value of the authority of Scripture. And it was present in things like gift giving, personal conversations, devotionals like we just talked about, and interfaith talks. And referring to his congregation's relationship with a mosque of Sufi-leaning Muslims, so mystical Muslims, one leader said this, we can really hit common ground when we talk about things like the Beatitudes. The taming the, the taming the ego and loving God, all those kinds of things. We can introduce scripture to them. We try to be very careful. Any opening we ever have to say this is what our scripture says, we read it right then and there. So it is also worth pointing out the Arab Bible study that I talked about earlier is the only church in my study that saw Muslims coming to Christ. That doesn't mean that the other churches aren't doing it well, but somehow a prolonged study of the Bible with Muslims can be effective in helping them to understand what the Bible is teaching and walking them towards Christ. So implementation. Centrality of scripture in these ministries demonstrates that Christians should use multiple avenues when introducing the Bible to their Muslim friends especially, as we just talked about, especially if it involves a prolonged study of the Bible together. Second, Christians should understand the beliefs and concerns of their Muslim neighbors and teach on scripture passages which speak to them. So what is the Christian view of fasting? What is the Christian view of hospitality? Things that, will, that your Muslim friends will resonate with and they can understand. 
Next, experienced, motivated team. Five of the nine leaders were former overseas missionaries. One of them worked for a humanitarian organization in a Muslim country, and another was a first-generation immigrant. So if you remember that chart from our first video, where cross-cultural experience was something that united a lot of these people who were involved in these ministries. One volunteer stated her appreciation of her leader and the person leading her mini the ministry that she was part of by saying this. She is just so sold, she has just sold out so much, completely sold out to reaching people. She is just a delight. Supporting her is also a privilege because she is such an impassioned leader. Volunteers involved in these ministries, eight out of the 12 reported having previous cross-cultural experiences we just talked about before. One volunteer involved in his church's ESL program said it this way, expressed his appreciation this way. I can tell you for those who are directly involved, it's absolutely been transformative for us. For myself, for my wife, we get out of there and we're just like, we're fired up. Like this is the best thing we did all week. We feel like we've made such a difference. We've made new friendships. These folks are so grateful to have us there. And one other aspect that contributed to the motivation of some of these teams was the support, the support of their senior pastor or pastoral staff. It's like giving rocket fuel to the ministry. So implementation. Local churches should identify those in their congregation with long-term overseas ministry experience when launching an outreach to a local Muslim community. They should also identify those with any type of cross-cultural service who might be interested in joining the team. So looking at people who have been on short-term trips or maybe involved with a group of refugees or something like this. Teams with experience and motivation are greatly encouraged when they sense the pastoral staff is behind them. And next, faith is foundational. Relationships that these Muslims and Christians formed were based on their respective faiths. So we talked about before where there could be tension because of certain doctrinal beliefs and because of our faith. So there, there can be a dividing aspect, but there's also a uniting aspect uh, to our, our respective faiths because we take God seriously. So a conversation I remember having at an Advent dinner that I attended, there was a young Muslim father who was asking us about the commercialization of Christmas and how do we help our children to navigate that? And how do we teach them that Christmas isn't about all of these things? And so that gave me a great opportunity to tell him about the Advent calendar that my wife and I use to really teach our children about uh, the, the message, the, the story of Christ's coming, starting with creation and working all the way up to the birth of Christ. And the young Muslim father was really impressed uh, by that, that we were doing that. So using these kinds of things and, and showing how our faith impacts our daily life is something that really speaks to Muslims. Um, another way that this was observed was in some of the social practices of the Muslims, also namely where the women were wearing hijabs and the boundaries observed between opposite genders, that that was respected. And we saw that because they think they're doing this to honor God we will respect that as well. So implementation. Like I said, there can be moments of tension due to our respective faith. It's also true there's a uniting aspect as Christians and Muslims can come together around shared conviction that faith is foundational to their identities. So this is an observation that should encourage us as evangelicals, that we can wear our faith on our sleeve with Muslims. And personally, I've had conversations many times with Muslim friends that where they have said, I, something like, I see in you something I see in myself. Namely, you take God seriously. They're not always used to meeting people like that here in the United States. So these next couple of slides are some questions to consider. If you're looking at your church to think about how do we engage the Muslim community through your small group, maybe through a Sunday school class or just a special team that you're forming, um, here are a, a, a list of 10 questions that you can look at. So you're the first five and the last five, uh, I would encourage you to, to go through those, uh, pause the video, slow it down, look them over and discuss them and think about what is a plan that we can come up with so that we can effectively engage a Muslim community. And if you, again, are interested in a more in-depth treatment of this material, uh, please see the, the article link in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.